Okay, so in this video, we'll be talking about epilepsy and seizure disorder. We'll discuss that what are the causes and types of seizures. We'll discuss that how do you approach a patient with seizures and how to start epilepsy treatment based on the type of seizure and how do you adjust, change and stop epilepsy treatment. Today, we are going to talk about that in detail. First of all, what is seizure? Seizure is basically abnormal discharging CNS neurons that causes abnormal muscular contraction and muscular excitation. And if the patient is having recurrent seizures, that is called as epilepsy. What are the causes of seizures? Causes of seizures can be easily memorized by the mnemonic vitamins. V for vascular causes like stroke, bleed, I for infection, meningitis, encephalitis, T for trauma, A for autoimmune like CNS, vasculitis, all these can cause seizures. M for metabolic, hypoglycemia, hyponatremia, hypocalcemia, hypoxia, idiopathic, neoplasm, and even psychiatric issues like conversion disorder patient can present with pseudo seizures. So these are all the causes of seizures and fits. Now, how does a patient with seizure can present to you? Patient can have abnormal movement or sometimes the patient are not having any abnormal movement, but they have change in consciousness. So that can, that can be a presentation of seizure. Patient will have sudden onset of seizures with or without any aura. Aura can be any change in the vision. There will be tongue biting and incontinence if it is a true seizure. And after that seizure has stopped, there will be a post ictal state for some time. Patient will present with disorientation, sleepiness after gaining conscious, after the seizure has stopped, patient will be disoriented for some time. That is called as post ictal state. This post ictal state, tongue biting and incontinence, these are very important factors because if these factors are absent, you must consider the diagnosis of syncope or pseudo seizures that occur in psychiatric disorders. Now we'll talk about different types of seizures. Types of seizures can be divided into generalized and partial seizures. If one part of the body is seizing, that is called as partial seizure. And if the whole body is involved, that is called as generalized seizures. Coming to the types further, partial seizures is divided into two types depending upon the consciousness of the patient. If the patient's consciousness is not impaired and patient is having seizures in one part of the body and is, is conscious, that is called as simple partial seizure. Simple partial seizure. Simple because consciousness is not impaired, partial because one part of the body is involved and seizures since the patient is having abnormal movement. If the patient has complex seizure, the consciousness will be impaired. Patient will be unconscious and there will be abnormal movement in one part of the body and there will be, that will be called as complex partial seizure. In generalized seizure, generalized seizure is further divided into tonic-clonic, tonic, myoclonic and two other types. We'll discuss each one of them. Tonic-clonic seizure is also called as grand mal seizure. In tonic-clonic seizures, what happens is that patient develop a tonic phase in which there is contraction of the extensor muscles of the body. And in the clonic phase, there is flexion of the flexors of the body. So patient will have tonic-clonic seizure that will affect the whole body. So it is a generalized seizure that involves the whole body and it is tonic-clonic seizure, also called as grand mal seizure. Other type is tonic seizure. In tonic seizure, body stiffening occurs, like body gets stiff and adopts a certain abnormal posture that is called as tonic seizure. In myoclonic seizure, which is a type of generalized seizure, there is a repetitive jerking of the body. And repetitive jerking of the body usually occurs in the upper arms much more than the lower limbs. So it's like electrical jerk type sensation where the whole body is trembling and the patient is having seizures that is myoclonic. It is called as myoclonic seizure since it involves the jerky contraction of the muscles. The other two types are atonic and absence seizure. Atonic seizure is also called as drop seizures where a person suddenly loses the whole tone of the body and drops down on the floor. That is called as atonic seizure. 
in absent seizure patient's posture is maintained there is no abnormal jerky movement there is no tonic clonic phase but the posture is maintained you can you can imagine like a kid who is in a class and he suddenly drops the pen and he is staring at the board and teacher is asking repeating his name again and again and he is not responding why because he is in an absent seizure that is called an, an absent seizure where the person maintains his tone maintains his posture but is totally unaware of his surrounding and patient has a blank stare now we'll talk about how to approach a patient with seizures if a patient is having seizures the first thing that you need to ask is that whether that patient is having any history of recurrent seizures is there history of epilepsy if there is no history of epilepsy and it was the first time that that patient had seizures then no treatment is required you need to just investigate that why that treatment, that seizure happened and no treatment is required if it was first time that that patient had any seizure if the patient has recurrent seizures if the patient has a history of epilepsy then you need to ask a few questions that whether he is on any treatment or not is he taking any medication for his seizure disorder is he taking any treatment for uh, epilepsy disorder which medications is he taking if the patient is already taking medications then you need to see that are these seizures getting worse is he getting seizures more often are these seizures lasting more longer and you need to look for any evident cause for seizures if the patient is having any infection or is the patient is having any emotional stress or is there genetic family history of uh, epilepsy so in such see these are the questions that you need to look for that why this patient of epilepsy who is having recurrent seizures has come to you what are the options available with you if the patient is already taking medication then you need to check that whether that patient is compliant with his treatment or not whether if he is not taking his medication properly he will present to you with recurrent seizures since he is not compliant with his medication if the seizures are getting worse and that patient is taking medication then you need to see that then you need to consider that whether you need to add any more medication anti seizure medication or you need to increase the dose of the drug or you need to change the drug so i'll i'll talk about all of these options in detail then in which situation you choose which type of option and if there is any evident cause like infection you need to treat that cause which is precipitating recurrent seizures if the patient presents to you with seizures there are certain labs that you have to go for the basic labs include serum electrolytes since we said that electrolyte derangement can cause seizures so you need to look for those electrolytes you need to do glucose hypoglycemia can cause seizures you need to go for cbc to look for infection magnesium rfts lfts toxicology all these things that can cause seizures you can spot them out in these labs other than that you should also go for ecg and once you have ruled out the metabolic and toxic causes then you should proceed towards ct and mri in those patients who are having recurrent seizures those patients who are having recurrent seizures and you have already ruled out metabolic and toxic causes then you should go for ct and mri and after you have done ct or mri and you have ruled out any space occupying lesion and you are suspecting that that patient is having meningitis or cns infection which is presenting as seizures you are suspecting encephalitis only in that case you should go for lumbar puncture and in lumbar puncture you look for those uh signs of infection you look for lymphocytosis neutrophilia whatever thing you are looking for eg will help you in risk stratification if there is any abnormal activity any abnormal epileptic form change in the eeg then it indicates that that patient is more prone to develop recurrent seizures that patient is a patient of epilepsy so eeg will help you in the treatment of this patient coming to the treatment of seizures first time seizures do not need anti convulsant therapy if the patient is having seizure for the first time in his life that patient does not need treatment until and unless there are certain exceptions in which even if the patient is having first time seizure that patient needs treatment if that patient has abnormal neurological exam if that patient presented with status epilepticus what is status epilepticus how do you manage it i have talked about it in detail in my video on status epilepticus treatment you can check out the link in the description given below if the patient has strong family history of seizure 
if there is abnormal EEG. In all these conditions, if the patient is having first time seizure and he has any one of these things, you must start anticonvulsant therapy. Now, depending upon the type of seizure, we will have to treat the patient. Now, treatment depends on the type of seizure that patient is having. If the patient is having grand mal tonic clonic seizure, then the best first choice is sodium velprovate and levetiracetam. And second line drugs include topiramate and lamotrigine. Sodium velprovate can cause patchy hair loss, GI upset, and even bone marrow suppression. Dose of sodium velprovate is 10 mg per kg per day, and you can go up to 60 mg per kg per day, and you give it in two to three divided doses per day. You must check CBC and LFTs at two weeks interval for first two to three weeks to look for bone marrow suppression and any hepatotoxicity because these drugs are also hepatotoxic. If a patient is having myoclonic or atonic seizures, then velproic acid in this case is also the treatment of choice. As in the grand mal seizure, in myoclonic and atonic seizure, velproic acid is used. In absence seizure, absence seizure is also called petite mal seizure. Ethosuximide is the drug of first choice in absence seizure. Second line drug include velproic acid. Ethosuximide dose is 250 mg twice daily and you can go up to 750 mg twice daily. In partial seizures, whether that partial seizure is complex, in complex the consciousness is impaired or it is simple in which the consciousness is intact, carbamazepine and phenytoin are the first line drugs. Now, we'll discuss that how do you initiate the therapy and how do you adjust the treatment in patient who is started on anti-epileptic drugs. Treatment should begin with first line drug for the type of epilepsy. As I explained the first line drug for each type of seizure, you start the patient on the first line drug according to the type of epilepsy type of the seizure that patient is having and you start with a small dose and you increase gradually until the seizures are controlled or the maximum limit of the drug is reached and you must frequently perform drug levels to check compliance if the patient is having recurrent seizures what you can do is that you can perform drug levels to look for the compliance that whether the patient is taking medication or not even after checking compliance and reaching the maximum dose, if the seizures are not controlled, then what you need to do is that you have to switch to another first line drug. Like in grand mal seizures, we have two first line drugs, so you can switch to the other one. But remember that you cannot directly stop one drug that the patient was taking and start another one. What you do is that you start the second drug while continuing the first drug and you slowly lower down the dose of the first drug and you slowly increase the dose of the second drug. And finally, you withdraw the first drug that that patient was taking. Note that it is done by maintaining the first drug while the other drug is added. Dose of the new drug is increased and then the first drug is withdrawn. You keep the patient on the first drug, you add the second drug, you slowly and gradually increase the dose of this one and decrease the dose of the first drug and withdraw the first drug. If the patient is having refractory seizures, then you need to consider a combination therapy. In a combination therapy, what you do is that according to the type of seizure, you, you pick the preferred first line drug and you take it to the maximum doses and you add a second line drug with it. That is called as a combination therapy. If this combination fails, then what you need to do is that that second line drug that you added with this first line drug in which you are, give, which you are giving in the maximum doses, what you do is that you replace this second drug with another drug. While that patient is already on that first drug, first line drug is continued, and the second drug that you are adding, you replace that with another second line drug. If still this combination fails, then you should look for a few factors. 
factors like compliance with frequent drug levels and you look for other factors that can affect control like alcohol intake drug interactions and other diagnoses that patient might be having another com comorbidity or even you should consider another diagnosis a further work up that patient might need for this refractory seizure now when you have put the patient on anti epileptic treatment when can you stop the treatment what is the indication for stopping the treatment if the patient has been free of seizures for 2 to 3 years and there has been no seizures for 2 to 3 years and you perform sleep deprivation eeg and sleep deprivation eeg was normal in that patient you can stop the anti epileptic drug treatment in summary we talked about causes of seizures types of seizures and then we talked about how to approach a patient with seizures if there is uh, if it is a first time seizure no treatment is needed then what questions you need to ask and then what are the labs that you have to do in a patient presenting with seizures and then we talked about the exceptions in which first time seizures is started on anticonvulsant therapy if there are these findings grand mal seizures sodium valproate and second line drug topiramate lamotrigine myoclonic atonic valproic acid absent seizure ethosuximide and then treatment should begin with first line according to the type of seizure check compliance and you you can switch the patient to another first line drug if patient is having refractory seizures combination therapy of first line with second line drug if it fails then second line drug is replaced you check the compliance and also control the factors that can affect the drug efficacy therapy can be stopped if the patient is seizure free for 2 to 3 years if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency treatment and status epileptic treatment the link of the video is given in the description below thank you very much